Hey everyone, welcome to this week's reading of Shard of the Sun. Apologies for missing last week. We had a lot of personal plans over the weekend and I just didn't get the time to record. So apologies. I know that's happened a couple times during this reading. Uh, but this is the last chapter. So um, for those of you who've been listening each week and following along with the story, uh, this is a solo book. So um, it does kind of have an opening at the end of the book where there could be another one. Um, but I have not come back to write another one. So, um, in case you've forgotten that, uh, up reading up to this, just know that, uh, with this last chapter, like that's the end of the book and there's nothing else coming after this. So, um, we will just go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Roderick crouched beside a crumbling pillar of gray marble. He risked a glance into the courtyard of the ruins and ducked back behind the column. The priest stood in a circle, hands clasped together. He saw another man, dressed similar to the priest, standing off to the side. He looked to where Napier said he would be, but he didn't see the elf. He wondered what Mark and the other soldiers were thinking. He could tell which of the men in the courtyard they were, but they knew they were down there. But he knew they were down there. All twenty were accounted for. He didn't see Farron. If he had to guess, he assumed the other man was Vias, foul, foul wizard's apprentice. Roderick remembered his encounter with that one well. He rubbed his jaw subconsciously, just thinking about the painful blow he had sustained at the man's hands. He noticed the tingling in his palm had returned as well. He hoped Napier would knew what he was doing. There wouldn't be much to do except die if they failed. Farron would see to that. He looked to the sky when he heard a rumble in the distance. Dark clouds were coming their way. He could make out the flashing of lightning in their black depths, illuminating the darkness of the clouds here and there. A loud thud turned his attention back to the courtyard. One of the priests lay dead, his blood pooling onto the floor. For some unknown reason, the other priests didn't move. He watched Vias walk to the next in line. The man held a dagger to the priest's neck and slit the flesh. He dropped to the floor also, blood spilling everywhere. Why are they just standing there? Concern gripped him as he considered the fact that Vias could be killing the soldiers disguised as priests. He couldn't just sit there and wait for Napier to offer a signal. He looked at his palm. Focusing on the showing bone, he thrust his mind into the connection with the shard. He was assailed by the bright lights he had seen before. They flashed and pulsed, blinding him temporarily. He blinked until his vision cleared, and saw the golden threads floating through the shard. He was tempted to touch them, but he reminded himself he didn't have time for that. He wasn't sure how to channel the power to obey his will, and so he tried speaking a little it aloud. Nothing happened. He found the blackness, and he hovered near it. If he did as he did before, he may not get away from Farron's mind unscathed, and it was entirely possible that the wizard would be alerted to his presence. He considered the dilemma. Perhaps Farron was using the shard to keep the priests bound in, s in one spot. Roger closed his eyes and tried to look beyond the shard. He could feel something in the air, some sort of barrier around the priests. He tried to shift it, but it was heavy and immovable. He changed tactics, concentrating on a portion of the barrier instead of the whole thing. He tried to determine which of the men was Mark. He picked one, hoped it was him. Concentrating on the barrier around the man, he tried to move it. At first, it seemed like it was futile, but he kept pushing, forcing his mind to find a weakness. And then he felt it budge. It wasn't much, but it was enough to give him the hope that he could free the barrier from holding the man. With a groan of pain, he felt the barrier fall away from the man, and just before his mind surged back into his body, he watched Vias slit another priest's throat. Roderick snapped his eyes open. He thought it had only taken him a few minutes to displace the barrier. The storm was almost above him now. He looked down into the courtyard and saw Vias poised to kill another man. He growled in frustration and looked to where Napier was supposed to be. He still didn't see him. A flash of lightning lit up the darkened sky. A loud clap of thunder followed soon after. The wind began blowing harshly. Where are you, elf? And then he saw Napier reveal himself from a hiding spot. He gave the signal. Broderick began to move slowly and quietly toward the center of the courtyard. Vias stole the life from two more of the priests. Vile rose up Broderick's throat, and he had to quickly swallow to keep from vomiting. His throat burned like fire. But he ignored the pain. He had to hurry. He slipped on a loose rock and fell on his face. 
He stayed where he was, hoping no one heard the noise. After a few seconds, he decided it was safe and rose back to his feet. He peered around the column in front of him. Bias was gone. Cursing his luck, he tried to determine where the wizard was without showing himself. One of the priests, the one he removed the barrier from, Dang. removed himself from the circle and threw his robes off. It was Ged. Broderick had hoped to free Mark, but Ged was certainly better than not freeing anyone. The tall soldier brandished his claymore and hid in the shadows. Still not seeing Vias, Broderick decided to move closer. A jarring force slammed into the side of his head, and he went sprawling onto the ground. He saw through blurred vision that Vias was standing over him. Fool, did you think you could come here unnoticed? Broderick clenched his eyes shut as a wave of pain overwhelmed him. He felt something heavy against his chest, and realized that Vias had pinned him to the ground with his foot. I don't know what you're planning, but it's not going to happen, Roderick spat. Vias leaned down and pressed the dagger he had used to kill a priest to his neck. The look in the man's eyes was all Broderick needed to know that he was about to die. And then a flurry of motion in his peripheral caught his vision, caught his attention. Ged tackled Vias, the two of them tumbling to the ground. Broderick forced himself onto his feet and ran toward the other priests. He had to free them somehow. Wake up! Quickly! Get out of here! he shouted, trying to get their attention. None of them responded or moved. He started pulling their hoods back, looking for Mark. Thunder rumbled overhead, causing the roof's rocks to scatter. To clatter. <clears throat> Roderick felt a hand on his shoulder and turned. Gid, he said, but froze in terror as he looked upon Vias. The wizard had a horrible gash across his stomach. He punched Broderick in the mouth, making him stumble backward from the force. Where are the other priests? Vias demanded angrily. Broderick used the back of his hand to wipe the blood from his mouth. The wizard stalked toward him dangerously. A ball of white light slammed into Vias, flinging him across the courtyard. Broderick turned to see Nafir, the wind rippling, ripping at his robes. Thought you'd never come, he said to the elf. Nafir ignored him and walked toward the end of the runes, disappearing into the cave. Broderick was unsure of what to do. He went back to the priest and found Mark. The soldier seemed to be coherent, but he couldn't speak. His eyes moved around furiously. I'm trying to free you, Broderick told him. Mark's eyes widened in fear, and Broderick turned to see Vias making his way toward him. The fake priestly garments were burned to a crisp, burned to a crisp, and the skin that was visible was blackened. Why won't he die? Vias reached out to grab him, but Broderick ducked under his arm. He circled around the wizard and grabbed Vias's dagger off the ground. Lunging after the wizard, he tried to stab him in the chest. Vias sidestepped, missing the worst, but Broderick grazed his shoulder with the blade. Vias growled in a mixture of anger and pain. Broderick swung the dagger back and forth, trying to hit the man. Ah. Vias stepped forward and under the swinging table and under the swinging blade, grabbed, grabbing Broderick's arm and twisting his wrist. Pain lanced through Broderick's arm, and he involuntarily loosened his grip on the dagger. The blade clanged harmlessly to the ground. Vias kicked Broderick in the knee. His legs were already weakened from the climb up the mountain, and he crumpled to the ground, gasping in pain. Vias picked up the dagger and grabbed Broderick's hair, forcing his head back. The tingling in Broderick's palm flared up again, and a desperate idea roared through his mind. He grabbed onto Vias's leg and imagined flames bursting from his hand. Everything seemed like it was moving in slow motion. Vias's dagger was coming at his exposed neck. The wind was blowing. Lightning crackled across the sky. Thunder shook the ground beneath them. Broderick blinked. The dagger seemed to take forever to reach him. And then, Vias's arm stopped mid-swing. <clears throat> his arm had hit an invisible barrier and flung the blade back f flung the blade from his hand, and then bright orange and yellow flames poured out of his hound, hand and onto Vias's robes, engulfing the man in a raging inferno. He scrambled back from the burning wizard. The man's agonizing screams tore at his heart. For a moment, he felt bad for Vias, to die by being burned alive, feeling your skin shrivel off your muscle. Vias fell onto the ground, flailing and thrashing. Broderick averted his eyes and Ged staggered and saw Ged staggering across the courtyard, covered in blood. His or Vias's, he wasn't sure. And then it began to rain. Huge drops of water fell from the storm clouds, splattering everything. It came down hard, pouring fiercely and drenching everything. Broderick crawled over to the ring of priests and noticed the water mixing with the blood on the ground. A torrent of black flames came rushing out of the cave, and Broderick dropped down to the ground to keep from being burned. He heard a whirring sound, and then suddenly Farron and Nafir were standing in the courtyard. 
They were flinging spells of all types at one another. Black flames, fiery darts, gleaming balls of light. It was happening so fast, Broderick barely saw their lips moving. It seemed like they took time, turns, rushing the other, magic flaring to life and then fizzling out. It was an epic battle that kept Broderick mesmerized. He barely noticed the barrier had lifted and the priests were scrambling to get out of the place. Farron slammed the end of his staff onto the ground. The stone tiles around Napier cracked and shifted down, threatening to sink the elf in, into their depths. The elf leaped into the air and seemed to hover there while a bluish haze of energy flared from his palm and struck Farron in the chest. The wizard flew ten feet and crashed into a pillar, the old marble crumbling under the force. Nafir wasted no time and dropped back to the ground, running to where Farron had fallen. A, f a massive fireball struck the elf full force. Broderick heard a whisper in his ear, Get the shard and flee. It's in the cave. He wasn't sure, but he thought it was the voice of Nafir. He watched the two fling magic at each other f for a moment more, then hurried into the cave. Flowing script covered every inch of the walls. The darkness was lightened somewhat by the shard, which, sp which hung suspended over a strange rune on the floor. Broderick didn't have time to ponder what Farron was attempting to do. He grabbed the shard and stuffed it into a pouch on his belt. He never... He saw Mark enter the cave. What in the name of Raven is happening? I'll explain later. We've got to get out of here, get the others, and let's go. They ran back into the courtyard, and Mark yelled for the others to follow them. Farron had a whip made of green light, was trying to strike Nafir. The elf dashed to the left, then to the right, easily avoiding the wizard's magical weapon. Nafir placed his hands together, side by side, and faced his palms towards Farron. He spoke one word. Oryk. Frost began to collect around Farron's legs, holding him in place and slowly spreading up his body. Nafir turned to Broderick. Here! He threw something in him, which Broderick barely caught. He held it up. It was some sort of crystal. Use it against the demon. Now go. Before, Farron used his staff to smash through the ice, then swung the staff horizontally, connecting a solid blow to the side of Nafir's head. Roderick didn't want to leave the elf, but he didn't have any choice. There was nothing he could do to help. As he turned to flee, a bolt of jagged lightning dropped from the sky and struck the dueling wizards. The flash blinded Roderick. A few seconds later, an invisible force sent him flying backward, slamming roughly into one of the pillars. He lay there, blinded for what seemed like an eternity. Slowly, the light faded from his eyes, and he was able to make out his surroundings. He sat up and rubbed the back of his head. A pounding headache assaulted him, and his hand was covered in blood. Tears stung his eyes at the pain, and he dared not move for fear he had broken something. Mark came into view, staggering toward him. His mouth was moving, but Roger couldn't hear anything. Then he noticed his ears were ringing. It was an odd sensation, not being able to hear. He stared dumbly at the soldier could only shake his head. Mark knelt down in front of him, tears streaming down his face. He kept talking, but Broderick tried, futil Broderick tried futilely to read his lips, but it didn't do any good. He couldn't focus long enough. Mark eventually gave up. After a half an hour, Broderick noticed he was star starting to hear again. The rumbling of thunder first, and then he heard the rain as it struck the ground. He stood up, his legs unsteady beneath him. He waited until he had his balance before trying to walk, and then he saw the reason for Mark's tears. Joel, the young soldier, lay face down. He was dead. A gaping wound in his head gave Broderick an idea as to how he had died. Broderick himself could have easily met the same fate. He knelt beside Joel's body and laid a hand on him. Nothing happened. He didn't understand why the shard didn't bring him back. Rising back to his feet, he looked around. Farron and Nafir were nowhere to be seen. The gray stones where they had been standing when the lightning struck were charred and melted. Forces of nature were a scary thing. Mark gathered the soldiers, but no one spoke. A heaviness pervaded the air. The storm had begun to subside, but the damage was done already. They began their descent down the mountain, the effort much less than it took to climb it. As they went, they came across several dead priests who had apparently fallen down the jagged terrain in their flight. When they reached the base of the mountains an hour later, the sun was shining. The clouds had rolled off to the east. Broderick was the first to notice that the horses were gone. They had probably fled when the storm came. They all stood there, staring in different directions. Finally, Broderick sighed and brushed some dirt off his shirt. It's going to be a long walk home, he said. That it is, Ged muttered. That it is. And that's the end. Hope you guys liked this book. Um, it was one of the first ones that I wrote, so... 
Um, I see a lot of things that I would change if I were to rewrite it today, um, but I don't rewrite books because it kind of shows you where an author came from. So uh, anyways, hope you guys like that. Um, and if you guys are enjoying the weekly readings, drop a comment below to let me know because uh, I do have another book that is not in audio that I can do this with. And uh, so I was thinking about doing that. So um, let me know in the comments if you like these videos and if you want to hear the next book. Um, it's different, unrelated. Um, but uh, yeah, let me know. See you guys uh, soon when I do a new update video.